Hi guys and welcome back to the blog. So hopefully this is a video with a lot better audio than last time because I'm back in my flat and I have my portable mic this time so hopefully we'll be alright. Um, I thought I'd update because now that my desk sounds come out, now that I've had a bit of time to think about it, obviously choices can change and I thought I would kind of document where I am now and of course my mind will probably zip back and forth between everything multiple times between now and when I actually have to get my choices in um but I wanted to document this and I wanted to document everything so here we go um so obviously I found out our ninth decile which hurts um but I know I've got a lot more to offer than the decile I was given and, and I know that doesn't represent me as a student and this can sound very egotistical and very dismissive but part of it is that I have to kind of keep myself sane <laughs> so I can't just let myself um, go and not work for finals because I'm ninth decile and I don't deserve it I just have to kind of go right this is the situation this is where I am what can I do thankfully and this hasn't been confirmed yet but so I won't be releasing this video until it might possibly be con confirmed because I don't want to spread like large rumours across the UK. Um, but apparently London, so the Kent, London, Surrey and Sussex uh, unit of application, which is the AFP's version of a deanery, is apparently not going to be long listing by EPM scores, which is amazing because it means I'm still in for shop. <laughs> So I just wanted to quickly tag this on the end because I was just editing um, the video that's going to go out. Um, I want to say thank you to Ollie Burton or Post Grand Medic or however you know him um, because he spotted that I was having a minor meltdown over this the other night and took an hour and a half out of his time to talk me through it and I don't know what I would have done not knowing what I know now. So thank you, Ollie. You are a legend. So where I'm applying in London has now also changed. So I had a good think about it and I was looking at accommodation and things like that because obviously I'm gonna to have to need to live somewhere. And I was also thinking that what I do actually want from my first year as a junior doctor, what I want to specialise in, and what hospital is going to give me that. And then I suddenly <laughs> thought, why haven't I looked at St George's? Why has St George's never even occurred to me? So I sat down and I really did some research and now <laughs> St George's is where I've kind of got my heart set on. I'm going to do a little bit more research because I still like Kings, um, for all the reasons that I said in my previous video but I also want to give a look into other London areas that I may not have considered yet and actually may be also really good for me however it's a bit hard to do this at the moment because we still haven't got booklets we still haven't got definite information so I'm sort of having to take everything at well with a pinch of salt essentially um I then have also thought about normal foundation program because I'm not kidding myself in the fact that there is a very real possibility that I won't get AFP um, with my EPM and things so I have to prepare for both and since I last made my what am I thinking video I have decided that working from home and living at home possibly isn't going to be the best thing for me I haven't lived at home since I was 18. I've lived in either Preston or Coventry and I think after seven years of not living at home it's going to be really hard to adjust back. So I've decided that I'm not going to do that anymore. <laughs> Which then left me thinking, well where do I go? And for someone who had said I'm going to South Thames from the beginning, I had a couple of weeks I was like, oh <laughs> I now don't have a plan and that was quite terrifying but talking to people and thinking about what I want out of life I have sort of come up with some other options so number one that came up was Birmingham so that'll be West Midlands Central 
which would be amazing because it's actually in a perfect location where I can get around the country to my friends. However, I know Birmingham are quite competitive and my EPM probably isn't going to stand a chance there, but it was an option and I'm trying to find out more about the Birmingham areas and to see what hospitals. Obviously, I've got a massive women and children's hospital there, which would be perfect as I want to go into paediatrics. I then also thought about Devon and Cornwall because I think being in a hospital by the beach would be incredible. <laughs> I also love Cornwall, I love Devon, I think they're a beautiful area of the country and to just have two years of, like, I'm not saying it's peace and quiet, but a little bit more, a little bit more controlled, a little bit more chill back than living in Coventry or Preston would be really nice. Um, I then also thought about East Anglia. Now this involves Cambridge. And I've always sort of wanted to go to Oxbridge. Um, I was on the path to, and then my mental health hit. So I actually went and visited my medic stepmom this weekend, who is currently working as an FY1 in Cambridge. And I just had the best weekend ever. The place is gorgeous, it's beautiful, it's exactly kind of where I like. It's got that mix of new and old town and the hospital that's there which is Addenbrooke's is huge and they seem really supportive towards their F1s. There's also, I've also now found out which areas the doctors, nurses, that staff at Addenbrooke's live in and they've got really good hospital accommodation there which is also something I'm considering. So I just think it really is going to be a good shout. So I know that I would have to smash my FJT to kind of secure a place in Cambridge rather than any other area of East Anglia. But my medic stepmom has also promised me to go over to Norwich to see what it's like there. So I've got that kind of two areas back up as such. So... With regards to South Thames, which is Kent and I believe a little bit of Surrey, um, it's it's still on the cards, but I just can't reason living in Kent and play, paying Kent rent prices and not living at home. And I think that's stopping me going back to Kent. So moving to London and being in London would be amazing because it's that proximity to home. Um, but I just can't, I can't in my brain reason paying £800 a month to live in the same county as the place where I could easily live for significant less than that. The final place I've also really considered is Wales. So I have two friends in Wales, one currently in Cardiff and one in Swansea. Um, one of them was my best friend at undergraduate, so to be in close proximity to her would be incredible. So I haven't actually been over there yet, so <laughs> I really want to spend time over there and find out what it's like. Obviously Wales has incredible perks for FY1. That's kind of where I am. I don't still exactly know what's going to happen over the next couple of days. It's currently the 30th of August and our deadline for the handbooks are meant to be out on the 1st of September. We then also can register with Oriel, which is the application we use to apply for our first jobs. It's a bit like UCAS for doctors. So we can register from that from the 1st of September and then the application window opens on the 8th. I was, say, I was saying this to my medic stepmom, like, I've always wanted to be a doctor and I have been, have done since I was 11, it's been something I'm working towards since I was 11, but I've never actually <laughs> combined the idea with being a doctor, going to med school and actually being a doctor and physically doing it myself, it's not something that's ever, like, combined in my head, it's like that bit in the Big Bang Theory where Howard doesn't quite connect the fact that Bernadette is pregnant with the fact she has a baby inside of her, that's what it sort of feels like and my brain is obviously very anxious because as anyone would be starting out in medicine for the first time but I'm looking forward to it, part of me is now like I'm, I'm done with watching people work, I want to 
get in there, do things myself and learn how to be a bit independent. So that's where I am. I also had a really lovely message from someone who I went to secondary school with this week and it actually made me cry because I didn't have a good time at secondary school. I I think looking back I wish I could kind of grab 14 year old Abby and be like nothing you do here will ever matter beyond here. Like no one's gonna know what house colours are, no one's gonna know what music colours are. Scholarships maybe yeah, prefix maybe yeah but actually Beyond the age of 18, no one cares, so stop stressing out, stop breaking your neck to do something that ultimately won't matter in the next couple of years. I guess that's my thoughts leading into registration and I will take you guys along the way along the rest of the journey. So my next update will be figuring out how the hell to use Oreo. I'm getting my GMC number! <laughs> it's all getting real. I'm gonna be a doctor next year. God help you all. <laughs> right. See you guys later, I suppose. Don't forget to like and follow to find out what the hell is gonna go on with me next year. <laughs> See ya. Bye.